All right, everybody. Uh, the film we uh, are scheduled to watch this week is called Fantastic Mr. Fox. And it's done by an American director, uh, Wes Anderson. Uh, he's a very popular uh, director. Some of his other movies are Royal Tannenbaum's Life Aquatic, Rushmore. Um, he's a gifted, gifted uh, digital storyteller. And this is his first uh, try um, at animation. And he does a remarkable job at it. Animation still work like our features do in terms of our story arc. And, and this has a traditional story arc. So uh, you'll recognize the beginning, middle, and end, the obstacles that the protagonist is overcoming, um, the process all very familiar to you uh, now. Um, what's, what's different is the process that, um, that they use to create the animation. So uh, in the Disney days, they're drawing uh, on cells, on, on celluloid. And um, here, he's actually, Wes is using puppets. And there is uh, about three different sizes in the puppets. And then all the sets, everything that we watch is created. There's no accidents. When we, in our classes, film something, we can run out, we can use uh, existing light and trees and, and all uh, of our surrounding natural world as backdrop in our films. And in an animation like this, you, you can't use anything. It's all manufactured. And they do a superb job with this. So typical narrative, our middle-aged man wants better better his life. He's just getting older. There's an existential moment in the film that's, that's uh, pretty amusing. Uh, it, it, it's a simple story, but most, uh, most good work is. That's, and it's just told differently. So the, the narrative, the story itself, comes from a, a children's book that Anderson uh, and his brother read as children. Uh, and then he decides to, um, to recreate this world um, in with uh, the stop motion animated uh, puppets. So everything's in miniatures and everything that we see is created by hand. It's an incredible, incredible undertaking. Um, there's no accidents here, so sometimes we'll be filming in the real world in non-animations, and you'll get an actor to say something or give you a look that wasn't planned for, and it's it's a happy accident. And and those don't happen here because everything is so precise and laid out. Uh, there's a level uh, of attention to detail that we don't find in most uh, other uh, undertakings. Um, some of our previous films, um, y you'll recognize um, the way that Anderson blocks he the framing that he uses. His compositions are all cinematic, but he didn't have to do that because he's creating everything within the frame. And yet he uses um, all the tried and true uh, things that we've been studying for acting, narrative, um, cinematography, sound. So all those elements are here, um, but they're just, they're just a cleverly uh, recreated in this environment. So the craft is very much the same. Uh, just a, a gorgeous example here. He's using shallow depth of field so the bush in the back is a little bit softer. He doesn't have to do that. It's a contained, closed environment. So he's using tradition, uh, he's using, using cinematic convention, porting it into this animated world. And that's why this is uh, clever and easy to watch and, and it seems familiar to us. So one thing, I, this is more for uh, scratching your head and looking at the detail, is every frame in an animation is is controlled and um, 
and they're doing slight movements within uh, that second, then snapping another frame. So just doing some quick math here, you got we know that we have 24 frames in one second of film, uh, 24 uh, FPS. The film is 127 minutes. So if you take 127 minutes, multiply it times 60 seconds, you get 7,620 seconds. And then if you multiply that by 24 frames, you have 182,000, almost 183,000 setups and slight movements within uh, the frame. An incredible amount of patience uh, for this kind of uh, filmmaking. And he points out that there is uh, there's a one movement scene and, and that gets a little bit interesting and tricky because he's moving puppets and he's moving the cameras. The, the one, one, <coughs> one of his uh, scenes took eight days to film and it ended up being 18 seconds in his uh, movie. So watch out the same shots, lighting composition we see in our past films and how he's using those techniques in his. And what, what he's doing is he's pulling from this visual language that we now uh, in, in this class have terms for. Uh, the acting, uh, there's really good uh, actors in here. Clooney's great, Meryl Streep's great. Uh, he did try and record them all together, not as individuals, so there's some interaction, and I think you can pick that up in terms of some of its uh, fluidness. Um, they cut all the audio first, and then the animators are recreating the, the action based on, uh, on that reading. Um, again, cine the cinematography is incredible here. Um, using cuts, uh, tracking shots, and every time you see that tracking shot, the camera move, remember that's happening at one frame uh, at a clip, and the camera's moving and the puppets are moving. Uh, <coughs> the sound, the actors, of course, have to bring the puppets to life, so they have uh, a great, great role in this. And then the sound effects of the world that, that he creates visually, uh, very, very important. Um, so uh, enjoy the film, it's, it's lighthearted, uh, it's amusing, uh, it's one of the reasons I hold it to, to the very end, because of the final and everything else that we have to do, um, it's a good one to just uh, sit back, enjoy, and watch um, all those things that we've decoded throughout the semester take place in this, this animated world. All right, good luck with the film. Thanks.